And this is a very common mold vibration system. used on uh, big board machines. So the way this system works is we have a production pallet and the production pallet sits on some stationary supports. In between these stationary supports are bars that we can refer to as impact bars and these are connected to a vibrator, a, a vibrating table. Very common in these vibrating tables is a combination of four vibrators. Each of the four vibrator shafts is, uh, is simply a shaft with bearing blocks on the ends and a counterweight attached. And so you very often see these work in pairs and they can be driven by pairs of servo drives so that you have one primary drive and one slave drive following the primary drive. They rotate in opposite directions. And when there is no vibration in the machine, these counterweights would be in opposite positions so they cancel each other out. When you want to induce vibration in the mold or force through these bars, then these counterweights are shifted slightly. And this can be referred to as a phase angle change of the drive. By doing these, now you see that the counterweights are not in balance, and that imbalance creates a force. And it's a force that's transmitted through these impact bars. This force translates into movement, and these bars actually come up and strike the bottom of the pallet as these shafts turn and rotate. The mold in a machine like this actually moves vertically in the machine. It can be referred to as an upstrip mold. When the pallet has been placed in position, the, the next step is for the mold then to be set down on top of the pallet. And so the mold is moved down into this position for filling and compaction in the machine. The force from these vibrators translated into a movement impacts the pallet, the pallet in turn impacts the mold and translates into a movement of the mold. So the mold movement is actually a reaction to these forces being fed from the bottom up into the mold. When, when the mold is filled with concrete and when it goes into compaction, then these shoes will apply a force downward onto the concrete in the cavities. Forces coming up from the vibrating table through the pallet into the mold and the concrete, compacting the product to size. A very common feature of table vibration machines is that the mold height 
is greater for a given height product than in a mold vibration machine. This is especially true for tall products or for hollow masonry block products. What this relates to then is for filling the mold, because these molds are taller, you end up with a relatively loose fill of concrete in the mold cavity. And then more work is done in the compaction cycle, bringing it to size. When this happens, there is a tendency for the force from the shoes to create a higher density of concrete in the top area of the product, the energy coming from the bottom up from table vibration to create a denser band of concrete at the bottom, leaving the center of the product relatively loose as compared to the top and bottom. Another uh, feature of this machine is that the product height is determined from the position of the bottom of the shoe in the mold to the position of the stationary supports under the pallet. And in doing this, the product height may vary based upon the variation in the pallet thickness of the production pallets being used. <laughs>